My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big. You're tuned in to Faith City Outreach with Marina Maria, the founder of Global Gospel Worship Radio. Maria interviews local Christian pastors, authors, musicians, and global leaders, sharing their testimonies and the servant work being done for the Lord. In Matthew 6.33, Jesus reminds us to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. We hope this program will encourage you to do just that. Now here's your host, Marina Maria. Welcome to Faith City Outreach. This is Marina Maria with today's special guest, Hope Cherie, who is a national gospel recording artist. She is also an Amazon best-selling author, a songwriter, blogger, actress, and a motivational speaker. Hope has received numerous accolades, including Song of the Year, Female Artist of the Year, and Radio Announcer of the Year. Her new song, Broken, was released on August 9th, and it is a profound song created to encourage Christians who are suffering with illness and disabilities and reinforces hope and resilience. The song Broken isn't just a song. It's a powerful testament to the resilience of the human spirit. As someone battling multiple sclerosis, hope knows the pain and isolation that chronic illness can bring. Thank you, Hope, for being on Faith City Outreach today to share about your new release song, Mm -hmm. Broken, which aims to uplift Christians with disabilities and challenges, the Christian community to open up their hearts and minds towards illness. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, you're welcome. Hope, before we discuss your new release song, Broken, please share your Jesus story with the audience. Well, I actually never went to church as a kid. I never, um, you know, I wasn't raised in church at all. Um, When I got about 21, 22 years old, Um, I started having some obstacles in life and someone gave me a now CD and it had Kirk Franklin on it. It had Marvin Sapp Mm -hmm. on it, Winans. And I remember listening to that, wondering like, you know, what is it about this God? What, you know, that they're talking about? And I wanted to know more about it. And so I picked up a Bible um, and started reading it. And a friend invited me one night. I was on some hard times. I remember being depressed that, that, that two weeks prior to that, being really upset and just not knowing what to do with my life and and how I was going to provide for my children. And um, she invited me to a revival. And I said, you know, I don't, I really don't know what this is, but Hey, let's do it. Let's go. Went to the revival and I heard the pastor talking and he was talking about Jesus and salvation and and how he walks with us. And um, and I was sitting there and I remember something at the time. I didn't know what it was came over me and I was crying and crying and crying. And um, and the tears were just flowing. And I was looking around, just watching people because I was so embarrassed, you know, just by the raw emotion that I couldn't control. And I was looking around like, oh, God, are they are they watching me? You know, are they seeing me? And I realized that there were other people doing the same thing. And some were just lifting up their hands and some were just, you know, shouting or excited. And I said, you know what? I said, you know, maybe I'm having a moment, you know, (laughs) but it felt so amazing. And and, and I remember, you know, in other situations, just looking back and saying, you know what? It doesn't take all of that. Why are these people, you know, hollering and screaming? Why are they crying? And I remember in that (laughs) moment, understanding that and saying, you know what? I get it now because it was something I truly couldn't control. And Mm. I realized in that moment that it was truly a God moment. And when I left the church that night, after the pastor prayed over me and spoken to my finances, spoken to my life, I went to, I dropped by an aunt's house and she said to me, oh, I meant to give you something. Now I haven't, I hadn't seen this aunt in a month. And I, she was like, I meant to give you something. She said, I have this gift card for you that I've been waiting to give you because I just hadn't she had a chance to see you. And I, and that was my first encounter with how God supernaturally can just feel a void and we didn't even, we wouldn't even know or you know have seen it coming. And so I in in that moment I knew that I had, had an encounter with God that night and that, mm-hmm. you know, with Jesus in my life that everything would work out. And so 
That's my Jesus moment. And it has carried me all of these years, 24 years that I've been saved. Did you already, or were you already singing at that time? I was, but I was singing R&B. I okay. was singing, um, uh-huh. I was out um, doing, you know, the R&B thing, doing clubs right. and stuff like that. But once I heard that Alabaster Box by <laughs> it changed. And I, said, yeah. and I started putting that in my spirit That's and singing great. and going to church and learning about God. Awesome. I gave my life 24 years ago and I have never, ever look back. On August 9th, your new song, Broken, was released, and it is a profound song that uplifts and inspires Christians to find strength in Christ during challenging times in um, during their illness. I know it is a personal song for you and between you and the Lord because of your, um, as someone battling multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. Um, How long have you been battling multiple sclerosis? I was, I started dealing with the symptoms of it in 2009. I woke up uh, one morning. I was just completely numb from the chest down. I couldn't feel my feet, couldn't feel my hands. Um, And that was in 2009, but I was actually diagnosed in 2012 because sometimes it just takes that long to figure out what is actually going on. Yeah. Wow. So what has been your experience so far when you were diagnosed with multiple sclerosis? Um, I just didn't have any feelings um, in my feet. I didn't have my hands were completely numb. I could I have no fine motor motor skills even to this day. Um, just have to use like gloves and stuff to stabilize my fingers. Um, mm-hmm. it, it was it was horrible from the beginning. Um, but it has gotten a little better. I went blind for six months in my right eye. I couldn't do anything. And let me tell you, I met a lady. Um, she was an atheist actually, and she worked with me. And um, when I got sick initially, I just was like devastated. I didn't know what was going on. I said, I'm going to lose my job. I don't know what I'm going to do. And she, I promise you, she was like the modern day Rumpelstiltskin. She literally took the work off my desk, did my work for me and brought it back at the end of the day for me to just look through it. She did it for six to seven months so that I would not lose my job and still could maintain the same quality of work. And I always talk about her because it was a true blessing and, and, she had no belief. She she does not. She's an atheist. <gasps> and so for her to step in, you know, knowing my beliefs and to say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I want to see you. You get through this. You know, I'm going to help you through this. It meant everything to me because people are people and God loves us all, regardless of where we are. And so it was tough for me. It's been a journey. Um, One of the, the reasons like for the song was broken is because of how I was treated when I first found out I was ill. This is back in 2009. I think people are a little better now, okay. but, but people generally just That's don't good. know what to say. You know, right. I think the number one thing that people as Christians that they say is, oh, don't claim it. Well, how do you tell a person that can barely walk or a person that is dying on their deathbed not to claim it? And so it's just some things that we have to learn that just are not acceptable or, you know, they kind of are demeaning in the mm-hmm. uh, in the community where disability is prevalent. Did your friend or does she know now that you are singing gospel music? Well, um, I think <laughs> she, she knew that then. She knew that. Oh, she knew it then. Okay. Uh-huh. She knew it then. Are you still yeah. in contact with her or no? No, I have no. completely lost contact. I couldn't even tell you where she is today. Okay. Did you complete the song Broken in one sitting or did it take um, several sittings to write the song? We did it in one setting. The song was written by uh, Ron Summers, who's an amazing, stellar nominated um, recording artist. He, um, I asked him, I was picking with him one day because he writes the most amazing music. And I asked him one day, I said, don't, I said, I know you have a song for me. I know you got a song for me. <laughs> and he said, oh, you know what? He said, I have a song that I wrote, I mean, years ago, probably 12 plus years ago. He said, so many people have asked me for this song. And he said, and I, I just keep saying, no, he said, God hasn't released it. God hasn't released it. He said, and by you asking me this today, he said something in my belly said, you know what? This is hope song. This is oh, hope song. And wow. he gave it to me. He gifted it to me to minister. And so, yeah. So it, but recording it, oh, we did it in one swoop. Because <laughs> it was the words, it was the sentiments of my heart. So right. It was like I was gonna say, like it was already there and you was it was just ready to come out. <laughs> it was already prepared. It was just <laughs> ready to come out. Yes. That is how God works. He goes ahead of us and he yes. prepares. 
the road for us. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, have you always responded to your pain by singing worship music? Or did the Lord take you through a spiritual process where you just chose to worship and praise him in the middle of your pain? I think um, because I'm a singer, I'm a songwriter, mm -hmm. um, it's easy for me to write my feelings. Mm -hmm. And if that is where I am in that moment, I'm definitely going to write about it. I mean, I write about <laughs> right. sad songs. Right. I write about happy days. I write about people <laughs> having hope. Any, okay. I can, it'll take nothing for me. I can ride past a grocery store and see the name of the grocery store and it's a song. So, <laughs> <laughs> it don't take much for me. But yeah, broken definitely comes from that place that I felt when I first was diagnosed. I know the song Broken is titled or has a unique title and it creates curiosity. I mean, when someone mm -hmm. hears Broken, they're like, okay, what could that song possibly be about? Right, right. Right. Now, what important message do you hope listeners receive from your song Broken? I want them to know that, you know, when you when you look at people who are disabled or ill or mm -hmm. anything like that, don't question our faith. You know, I hear that a lot. You know, mm -hmm. people question your faith. They question, um, you know, your belief, um, you know, and then they mm -hmm. they treat you a certain kind of way. It's almost like, well, you know, why why didn't God heal you? He healed me, you know. And so mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, I always take myself back to two different Bible stories where one of them is where um, Paul asked God to remove a thorn. He said, I have a thorn in my side. He said, I went to God three times and asked him to remove the thorn. And he said, um, my grace is sufficient. It is in your brokenness that you are made strong. It is in our brokenness that God makes us strong. And so that is where, you know, I, I draw from. And I also draw from when um, when people think this way, like, you know, what did you do? Oh, you know, what sin have you done to make you sick? You know, people think that way. And to come against that, I always talk about when the man asked Jesus, he said, well, what did his father or his mother do that he would be born blind? And Jesus said, um, his, mo his mother nor his father did anything. He was born that way so that the glory of God shall be shown in the earth. And so it's a lot of reasons why people get sick or have cancer or, or anything like that. So what I want to do with this song is just to come up with a united front because I am a disability advocate where mm -hmm. people can show compassion and love for people that is sick. He who is sick among you is the people that God wants us to bless. He wants us to hug on them and love on them and let them know that they are not alone and that they are actually very strong in this very place. And so that's what the song is about. That's what it represents. And that's what it, it aims to do, to encourage the broken. Right. You know, and as you were talking, I think about how we are all broken in some way. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the Lord just wants us to go to him as we are. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we're afraid and think we think, oh, well, you know what? Uh, I'm not good enough. I can't go to him right now because mm -hmm. I'm dealing with this sin or I'm dealing with with, you know, this struggle, I can't go now, but we all, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, from Adam mm -hmm. and Eve, we're all going to be broken in some way. I'm yep. sorry. In we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> and that's why I so said, when you say broken, it can be physically, but it also Sex. can be mentally. Right. It can be spiritually. spiritually. You exactly. know, people are just going through so much. So it's truly that call to God to say, you know what, put me back together again, because right. one thing I believe is that God is a God. He is a God of one touch healing, but he is mm -hmm. also a God that will say, my grace is sufficient. And in this exactly. broken place, you are so special to me. And that's what Amen. we want people to know. Some parts of your song remind me of how King David wrote many of his Psalms, because mm. You first state your condition, and then you ask the Lord's help, and then you realize that all you need is to draw closer to Him. Now, it seems like a process that I see in the King in the Psalms, and I thank you for being so authentic with this intense song that has anointed lyrics and draws the the listener to Jesus's feet. Um, so when I when I heard this song several times after several times after I really you know started focusing and closing my eyes. I just saw you like at his feet, just singing wow. to him. And mm. especially when you said, can you wipe my tears away? Yes. So it was a beautiful vision. And thank you for writing this song, like I mentioned. And it has reminded me of two of my media partners, too, who battle with 
a chronic illness and disability and how I ch- appreciate them for their faithfulness in serving yes. the Lord, despite their yes. adversity. Yes. It takes so much faith to be able to, you know, and that's, that's so, that's so funny to me because I hear so many people question the faith of people who are ill, mm-hmm. but it takes so much faith to be able to mm-hmm. get up day after day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, and do exactly. what God called you to do. Even when you don't feel like it, it just exactly. so much faith. I mean, just to get for me to get on this road and travel and be singing and ministering and doing workshops and classes. And I and I right. really did not even feel like getting up this morning. But because yeah. I believe that yes. God has a greater purpose for me in my exactly. life, then the illness is nothing. Right. It is nothing right. <laughs> compared to the glory. <laughs> That I will Absolutely. get into Yeah. And look at the fruit it has produced because you have faith. You have yes. fruit that mm-hmm. your faith has produced. Yes. yes. So yeah. that's Absolutely. so beautiful. This is Marina Maria from Faith City Outreach, and I am speaking with today's special guest, Hope Cherie, who is a national gospel recording artist. We are talking about her new song, Broken, which was released on August 9th, and it is a profound song created to encourage Christians who are suffering with illness and disabilities, and it reinforces hope and resilience. Mm. Hope. There are so many Christians suffering from different types of illnesses and in different places of the world. And in Isaiah 55, verse 8, the word says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares Mm -hmm. the Lord. Please express how we Christians can view illness through the eyes of Jesus and not through our human eyes. As you had mentioned earlier, that people question your faith. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that um, we can view through the eyes of Jesus just by showing love and compassion. Um, Mm -hmm. encouragement, you know, even down to, you know, some of the Bible stories that talks about how Jesus would encounter people who were sick and how he would love on them and how he would help them and, and, you know, and encourage them. Like when he said, pick up your mat and go, like Mm -hmm. he would say these things to Mm -hmm. encourage people. And so it's in, in more than anything, if you see someone who's sick, just say, I see you, Mm -hmm. I see you, you Mm -hmm. know, because at the end of the day, we don't want to look at it. A lot of people don't want to look at it. They want to, they don't want to be around people that are sick. They don't want to be around people who talk about being sick. And I tell, and it, because it, it shows them or makes them feel like, oh, this person doesn't have faith. They're talking about being sick. But the reality is, I tell people all the time, don't get stuck on the diagnosis and talking about the diagnosis. But it's okay to talk about how you feel. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel good today, it's okay. You don't feel good today. I just pray that someone's around that who is willing to listen and let you get it out because we have to be able to listen to people. We have to be able to have compassion and we have to be able to love. And so if we can can encounter people who have illnesses with that, it goes a long way just to say, how are you doing today? And listen, you know, we don't do that anymore. We walk past people and say, hey, how you doing? And keep right on going. We don't even care to stop for the answer. But I really try not to do that anymore. Like if I'm in yeah. the store and I see somebody, I will say, right. hi, how are you doing? And I literally stand there like, you ready? You tell me. And they're shocked. <laughs> like, oh, oh, I'm okay. I, you know, and they're not familiar, but you know, that's what I do. And so I think people who are ill need, not want, need the same thing. I know that you have had many interviews on TV and radio. What is something people don't know about you that you never shared about yourself before, but you are ready to share now? Wow. That is a huge, heavy loaded question. <laughs> Because I'm very transparent. I'm a very transparent okay. person. I'm always out there. I'm always doing stuff. Um, but I don't know that people, I mean, I've been, I handle my um, I guess you could say my brokenness to some degree, um, by working. And I and I overwork. I really do overwork. Sometimes people will say, How are you doing all of that? And I'm like, mm, yeah, I, I'm over, I overwork. And so what I like to do um to balance that is to go out to the beach. I like to be one with nature, I like to yes. go out to the lake you know, stuff like that. Anytime that I'm feeling that overwhelming sensation that I want to dig into work, I will go and and just become one with nature. I think that's something that we all need to do because it's so encouraging. It's so uplifting. Um, Just like last night, I went to the beach 
And so when I look at the beach, I know without a shadow of a doubt, there's something out there. There's a God out there. There's Mm -hmm. Jesus out there who's way, way, way bigger than me. And so that's what I do. I have to tap in sometimes when I'm overwhelmed. Everyone has a choice to decide how to react during an illness. Some mm-hmm. people respond with bitterness or with hopelessness, and others choose to pray uh, to praise and worship Jesus. Mm-hmm. What encouragement would you give to those in pain and suffering and are experiencing hopelessness? I would say to, to truly tap into the word, and, and more than that, to tap into yourself, tap into the purpose. Really ask God to give you your purpose. What, what am I mm-hmm. here? For, you know, mm-hmm. tap into what what the what I might have to do, or you know, what God is calling me to do. Really tap into that because once you tap into that, then you'll really know that regardless of what my physical state may be, mm-hmm. there is a greater work. And so I think that um once you really get that that tap in, you can deal with it. And just you know, if if you know of um someone who may be dealing with the same thing, partner up. Come up with the foundation, come up with a some type of a work or, you know, like an outreach work, because there is nothing more rewarding than the work that we do for other people. So think about how you feel and create what you need. I always say create you create what you need. If you need a support group, create one, because guess what? There are other people who need it, too. So I think it's important that when we feel that we're lost, when we feel that we're hopeless. We need to tap into the very thing that we need and create it because sometimes God is just using you and giving you that feeling of compassion. Long story short, I went to God one night years ago and I said, God, give me compassion. I don't have it. I don't feel like I care about much. (laughs) So give me (laughs) compassion for your people. I want to have compassion. And in that night, he gave me a dream. If you know me, you know, I do dream. I dream a lot. He gave me a dream. And in that dream, he, he put me in every situation. I was a, I was on drugs. I was a teenage mom. I was all these things. And when I woke up that night, I remember crying because I felt that compassion. And mm-hmm. so that's what has happened in my life now. So when I see different situations, I don't instantly judge it. I don't inst- instantly say, well, why is this person homeless? No, I have compassion for it. I, I've been there, <laughs> even if it was a dream or not, I've been there. <laughs> and so I feel like through that, God has allowed me to create what I need. And and I think that's what he's doing in a lot of us. We just don't realize it. Right. And I like how you said you ask God for compassion. Mm-hmm. And that lets, you know, that reminds us that we can ask God for anything, you know? Yes. So if we're dealing Ooh. with something, struggling with something, then ask him for it. That's it. Right. That's it. Ask him yes. for it. And, yes. and you might get a my grace is sufficient. Just like, right. just exactly. like uh, Paul did. You might get a my grace is, is sufficient. But what Paul said, so that I would not be conceited, so that I would not be puffed right. up. Right. God gave me this. And so we have to look at our natural state of being and say, what is God giving me so that I won't fall off the edge? Mm. Amen. The way to look at it. <laughs> The Bible tells us to be content in all things, but this is the will of God concerning our lives. And if God said, be content in all, he said some, he said all things. Yes, all All things. things. Because this is the will of God concerning my life. Yeah. Hope, I'm curious to know, what has been the reaction from your new release song, Broken, so far? I know it's available to hear in all socials, and we will hear it at the very end of this interview, which is coming really soon. So what has been the reaction so far? Oh my gosh, it has been amazing. Um, I My cell phones and phones are just filled with stories of people who are broken, people who have you know just reached out to me and said, hey, I, I heard the song, it touched me. You know, I've been walking around wow. for 20 years with this pain um, and it's gone, you know, it is gone. I, it is broken. <laughs> broken. <laughs> and so- I'm like, wow. I mean, I'm literally, I was literally in tears the other night when a lady explained to me about, um, you know, a situation that she went through and she said she's been carrying it 20 years. And oh. and for her to say, I heard that song and it is gone. You know, the pain is gone. And now I'm I'm oh. able to heal and walk through that process. I said, I, the tears just started flowing. I said, God, what do you want me to do with all of this? Like, <laughs> and he gave me a number. God gave me a number. 
And he said, these are the people that I want you to reach. And he said, when you reach that, I'll do the rest. And so I've just been going out, talking to people. When I see people in the store now, if they're handicapped or I see that they're going through, I stop. I stop and I talk. I don't care if it's one of them or not. We just go keep on talking. <laughs> <laughs> and I just encourage people. And, and that's what it's about. That's truly what this is about. Wow. People so- love it. They love it. And all these stories, I mean, they, they need to be heard, Shuri, or Hope. Mm-hmm. And um, you could probably, I mean, I know you have a radio program too. Maybe, you know, add all those stories. These are the broken stories based on my song, Broken. Yeah. Uh, mm, people that, need to hear it. That's a great idea, yeah. yeah. They well, really you know, my show, uh, Adults of Hope Radio, um, I came up with the show because I'm a disability advocate. So a lot mm-hmm. of people on the show, may, like I have a lady that comes on with me quite often. She has no arms. Um, I've, I've had people on my show with no legs. I've had people, I mean, all kinds of things, uh, paraplegics, and they are doing the thing. Like they're out here making a difference, pounding the pavement. Um, they have husbands, you know, wives, cars, they drive, they're, they're motivational speakers. Like they are, these are people who have overcome the odds. So that's what a dose of hope radio is about showcasing people who have overcome the odds. And that's a part of the broken. Yeah. I'm I'm dealing with something. Yeah. My body may appear to be broken, but I'm not broken at all. And so that's why I say it's okay to be the okay and broken. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> Amen. Yes. And as you were talking again, and I don't know why, and maybe there's, I don't know, but I just see like all of you getting together and either at a conference yeah. and just sharing what you're doing. Yeah. The world. yeah. I, you know what? I, I'm hoping to put together um a tour. Called yes. Book. Yes. Maybe yes. that's what it is. <laughs> exactly. I've been working on it and I want to go around. It, I think it's going to be amazing to share the song. Oh. Um, going to have other artists on there who right. have, have dealt with physical issues or, exactly. or mental or spiritual, and they're going to be telling their stories. And then we're going to have some motivational speakers there to encourage yes. people. It's going to be free to the disabled. Um, exactly. And I'm really um, trying to put that together for the new year. So, yeah. Amen. That is confirmation from the Lord. <laughs> As you were talking, I just saw a whole bunch of you together, just yes. sharing, <laughs> sharing what you're doing for the Lord, despite Absolutely. the adversity. Absolutely. Hope, what's the best advice or action we can do when we know someone who has been suffering with an illness for a long time and mm-hmm. they are in deep pain now? Just be there. Just be there. Be there. Um, show up. You know, show up. Call them. Check on them. Don't forget them. Um, and just give them as much encouragement as you can. Send a basket. Whatever you have to do, because sometimes it's just not people are not going to get that one touch healing. It just doesn't happen that way. And a lot of times we go through for the people around us. And so the only thing I can ask you to do is to be there for them, to encourage them, to lift them up, send them songs, you know, everything you can think to do that makes their world better. Bring the outside in because in a lot of ways they can't get out. They can't go outside. They can't, you know, it's a lot of limitations depending on what they're going through. And they may just need a moment. They may just need a song. They just, you know, recently I had an aunt that was in the hospital and nobody could go see her because she had COVID and a a couple of other things. And the doctors didn't want anyone around her. And so the only thing I could do was text her, call her every day. How are you? You know, send her songs, um, you know, send her gospel, um, you know, people speaking about different things. Just all the things I knew she would like, flowers, just just cherished her from the outside. And sometimes that's what we have to do to keep people lifted and encouraged during the time of uh, turmoil. the 
Worship Radio with Marina Maria, where all the nations praise the Lord with Christian international music and radio programs. We'd like to thank our major financial sponsors, Spectrum Insurance and Financial Group, for supporting our program, as well as our other media partners who make the broadcast of this show possible. If you'd like to donate to our radio ministry or to learn more about it, please go to globalgospelworshipradio.org. And finally, we hope you'll go with this blessing from Psalm 29, 11. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Thanks for listening.